Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Revere City Council Subcommittee on Public Works. Uh, please rise and help me uh, join me in saluting the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Roll call, please. Roll call of the members of the Public Works Subcommittee, Councilor McKenna. Here. Here, Councilor Morbido. Here. Here, Councilor Powers is absent. Councilor Rizzo is absent. And Chairman Novoselsky. Here. Here, quorum is present. First item, please. <clears throat> First item on the Public Works Subcommittee agenda is that the city clerk convened an on site visit to the culvert on Asti Avenue with a representative from MassDOT, District 4, a rep from DCR. Rep. Vincent, DPW Superintendent, and the Public Works Subcommittee. This is a motion by Councilors Rizzo, Patch, and Giannino. Okay, um, just so everybody know, we, knows, we did have a uh, site visit last month, I believe, and uh, I thank uh, Donnie Charmella for joining us and taking action even after the fact. I guess the only representative that wasn't there was DCR, uh, Mass Dot was there, and Representative uh, Vincent was there. Uh, Superintendent was there, right? Were you there, Donnie? Uh, you were not, okay. Um, and members of the uh, Public Works Subcommittee. So uh, there isn't much more we can do. We, you know, everybody's keeping an eye on the area. Uh, the uh, water, water uh, Superintendent uh, Donnie Charmello has been down there on numerous occasion since that event. Uh, Mass Dot did promise to uh, raise the fence there so people couldn't throw things over the fence from the, uh, from the public home, from the homes, and use that as a dumping ground for their leaves and other, uh, other materials. Uh, we can't do much with the Mass Highway side of it because people just stop on the side of the road and, and uh, dump what they want. So, uh, Council Patch, you want to say anything on this? Since it's your award, no, I I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, it was a uh, very informal uh, meeting. Uh, uh, I believe uh, Mr. Falzoni was uh, very pleased with the sh with the show up and with the water superintendent, and uh, uh, he. Uh, that's like you say. So we just got to. Uh, uh, keep our eye uh, our eye on it, but it, uh, he is he uh, actually is because as Donnie will uh, tell you, uh, um, I got a late night call, one rainstorm, and uh, and you, I want to thank you for coming out and uh, and taking care of it. Uh, the, there was a little a problem with the uh, the great be on Nasty Ave being blocked, but. Uh, uh, that's what uh, if that's what we got to do, I guess. Thank you. Any other committee members want to say anything? Council Morbido, Council McKenna. No. Um, do I hear a motion that we uh, recommend place this on file at the council meeting? Donnie. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Councils, good evening. So um, we did have that meeting, and I got promises from the DOT to come down and cut the frag along the along the ditch because the frag is probably six and seven feet tall and <clears throat> once we get snow on top of the frag the frag is going to start to bend over into the ditch and cause start causing problems with the seeds and the buds that are on top of it and anything that dies is going to fall into the ditch and the trash racker so i got a promise from the dot um, Unfortunately, they haven't made good on their promise of cutting it. So they were supposed to go down there and cut it with mowers. They said that they tried sometime at the beginning of November, and they were unsuccessful in cutting it. So on November 15th, we went down there, my crew went down there, and we cut it. And we cut it up three feet from the ditch so that anything that snow fell on wouldn't wouldn't bend down into the ditch and start causing havoc. So what we did was we, we cut it and obviously removed it. So um, now the, the DOT 
I've been asked, you know, Mark Crapman, if he would come down there with the mowers and please, you know, try to maintain the shoulder of the, of the highway like they used to do years ago. They used to have that articulating arm that would go over and cut it. And uh, there's also some other material there that can be removed, things that blew off of vehicles. It just blows off. So I haven't really had too much success with getting them there. So there's three of them that I'm in contact with, Larry Glaze book, Mark Crapman, and then a gentleman by the name of Scott, and what is it? McCarthy. And so unfortunately, you know, we haven't, you know, they haven't been able to do what we intended, you know, we had asked them to do. So, but um, I know mosquito control will be down there like they are all the time to, uh, to, uh, to, to hit it with an insecticide for the mosquitoes, but the Phragmite have got to be removed. And, and that should be a maintenance thing for you know, DOT. That should be theirs. And we would definitely work with them to do it. I mean, we've already done some of it. We'd like to do all of it, but uh, I don't really have the manpower to go in there and physically cut it. But they do. At least they have the machinery to cut that shoulder. So, so that was on November 15th. And we can do it subsequently after that, and we are continually watching the trash rack. Thank you, Donnie. Superintendent, you want to say anything? You all good? Okay, do I have Council Member Beadle? Uh, this, Mr. Chairman, if you can leave, give me a few, cup, two minute leeway just to be a little off topic. I just want to commend uh, Mr. Chiaramella on the work you've been doing. I'm so pleased. I am very, very pleased. Um, every time I call you, whether it's spur of the moment, whether I email you, you are so responsive, very responsive, and, and that's an attestment to your leadership. So thank, you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's what I'm here for. There a motion on the, from the committee to place this on file. All in favor? All opposed? Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is a motion presented by Councilor McKenna. This is uh, regarding a comprehensive educational program for the residents of Revere relative to the new trash and recycle bins. Well, I guess I'm going to turn this right over to Councilor McKenna for our uh, schoolhouse lesson. I'll be brief. Um, I put this together because I just don't want it to fall on the wayside. Um, I want people to really um, not abuse these trash bins. And so far, there's, a lot, it's, there's been a lot of PR on Revere TV. Uh, I do see the trash bins working, although there are trash bins that uh, have, they're overloaded with uh, plastic bags and their lids are open, which would, you know, our main issue is to combat rats. So the rats could get in there. I saw a, a rat picture on Facebook. Um, so, um, and also I see the plastic bags still attached with what you can throw away uh, in, still attached to the uh, trash bins. So what I'm looking for is just more awareness. And I would love to get Revere High School involved. Um, this would be beneficial to Revere High School, especially seniors and juniors that are looking for uh, uh, um, hours you know, community um, hours so they can uh, graduate because there's, there's a, uh, they, they need hours, a certain amount of hours to graduate. And also it would be, it looks really good for when they're applying to college that they've worked on a program. Uh, or, you know, they worked on a trash program or whatever it is. So I would like to see it go a step further and maybe into the schools for, um, you know, public knowledge. Maybe we can get a club going um, in Revere High School so we can get some of these kids because when I was a teacher we had a recycle club and the kids would go around to all the uh, rooms and they would take all the recycle. We had two bins, one recycle, one garbage. And he, they used to come around, they used to take the recycle bins and then they'd put them on the sidewalk and, re and DPW would pick them up. So I would like to see it go with one step further. That's it. Thank you. Uh, yes, Councillor. Uh, when we started this trash barrel program, we realized we did we needed to do a lot of outreach and education. 
Um, so we started with a card that went out uh, telling everyone to anticipate the barrels. That information that and I agree with you is still hanging from some of these barrels, but that there was a lot of good information in that pamphlet, and then a follow-up letter was sent. And we realized that we're going to have to keep doing more over the next couple of months prior to the enforcement end of it. And once the enforcement end of it comes, it's not going to be an immediate uh, fine. There's going to be warnings sent out explaining what you're doing wrong and, and how, to, you know, how, how to cure that. So, and then, uh, like you say, the L. Baker with the uh, group at the... Uh, uh, High School, the Revere Health Leadership Council. Uh, she's been working with them. We're going to be starting a textile recycling program the beginning of March. They have already met and they've uh, created some skits that they're going to put on uh, Revere TV and on social media explaining the new textile recycling program. So uh, there has been a movement to get the school involved and they have and, and, they've, and they've taken this one project so far and then they're going to hopefully be doing more. So there will be an intensive education program prior to the enforcement, and even when the enforcement start, it, it'll start with warnings explaining what you're doing wrong. You won't be hit with a fine right off the bat. Okay. Councilor okay? yeah. Gonzalez, yes. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'm not a member of the subcommittee, and thankfully I'm not because I think. Uh, the city has done yeoman's work in, in introducing the citizens of Revere to the program. And for those folks who haven't taken the initiative to take off that simple wrapping on, the, on their fix to the uh, barrel, shame on them. Based on the fact that it's in two languages, it's self-explanatory, you couldn't get it any clearer. This is what you put in this barrel, this is what you put in recycling, you lift up the bid, put the trash in, Good night, and you close the lid, and you put it in an orderly fashion out in the street like you always do. So the educational process, uh, I mean, really, spirit of cooperation for those individuals who, who chose not to do that, I think they should be fined. Mm -hmm. That they're not even taking a, a, the least interest within our community. There's something affixed to the barrel. You don't take it off to see what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And if you, and, you know, I understand there's a learning process to learn every new event, but really? Trash, open the lid, throw it in, close it, put it out in the sidewalk. I mean, it's a simple, you know, I don't care what country you're from. That's, it's very easy to, to understand. But um, according to Councilor McKenna, that some of the programs that she has, she wants to offer into to the school mm -hmm. system, as you already alluded oh, a to. A lot of excellent I ideas. Think, I think it's beneficial. But as far as the, the folks that, are, uh, that receive these barrels, and by the way, the barrels are quite nice. They're not falling apart. No. I mean, you're not mm -hmm. meant to be thrown against a wall. Right. You just take them up, put the stuff in, and, and wheel it out. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't be any simpler than that. And uh, I just don't get what this big confusion is all about. And uh, for those folks who don't know about it yet, they're, they're not really uh, in tune to anything because right. we've reached out. The, the city's reached out. They've gotten mailers at home. Got it affixed to the barrel, mm -hmm. got it on TV, got it in the paper. What else do you need? You know, and, and to further educate the, the kids to go home and tell their parents, that's even more beneficial, you know. And I think uh, Councillor McKenna is right in, in, in asking that be introduced there, and I'm glad that you've already taken the initiative mm -hmm. to do that. But other than that, well, you know, we're talking trash, put it in a barrel, and please be good, be good neighbors. You can't teach a person to be a good neighbor. Right. You can't teach a person to be, you know, live within the laws because these individuals just don't care about anything. If they're not putting their trash out properly, God knows what the inside of the house looks like. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And another good source of information, if you go on www.revere.org backslash trash, there's a lot of excellent information about the new program and, and there's a frequently asked questions section. So I think any question that anyone would have is answered there. Councilor Beetle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the most part, I think we've taken the right measures to, um, as a city to get the word out. But I do like what Council McKenna mentioned about getting the information related through the students. Because a lot of times at home, um, you have parents who are not 
speaking English or English is in their primary language. So I think it's very important to use the students as a tool to relay the message. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if it's legal to, if, are we allowed to send pamphlets out yeah. to all the yes. parents? Yes. Did we do that? Yes. Yeah, positively. Yeah. Like I say, L. Baker uh, with the Community Development has reached out to uh, this particular group who also uh, works with Revere Cares. I'm sure there's other groups at, at the high school. But other uh, than Revere High School, I'm talking about elementary school, mm -hmm. kindergarten. Are letters going home with their parents? Uh, not yet. Not no. yet. But, not, but eventually like I say, they will. This is going to be a couple month education process. And, we, and we're also actively pursuing DEP grants. They have a substantial amount of money that specifically for education and recycling. So we're actively pursuing those and hope to get some money this coming year. Uh, and I agree with Councilor Guanasso. You look at a barrel, it's common sense, you throw the trash in there. You, yes. But it's a matter of educating them. And because as I'm traveling throughout the city, what I'm seeing, people are still using the barrels. I understand with two, three weeks into the program. Right. But eventually, how are we going to enforce this? Because inspectional services has it over their head. Mm -hmm. with, they're backed up with appointments, inspections. Mm -hmm. So my concern is, how are we getting to these people who are putting out their regular trash barrels? Well, I guess we need a backup plan. We can't rely on inspectional services. Not that we can't rely on them. We can't expect to have that, that expectation that they can enforce this because they have way too much other items on their plate. I agree. And one of the uh, things that we did when we purchased these barrels, there was also software that went along with it, and it's been installed on all the uh, trash trucks that uh, Capital has. So as the truck goes down the street, the uh, card is registered with the truck, and if the, and the, the driver is on board with this, if he sees a violation, there are certain buttons that he presses uh, on his uh, dashboard that then gets sent back to us, and, they were, and we're able to send letters out to those people explaining to them what they're doing wrong. So before we get um, ISD involved, we can go out, identify some people that aren't doing, you know, the, the proper thing. We're able to reach out to them through a letter uh, and try to cure that prior to any enforcement from I ISD. Because we realize that they're uh, strapped at what they're doing and we certainly want to be the last resort calling them out and, and issuing fines. So we're hoping that process works. We're going to be seeing over the next few weeks uh, how that works, uh, and that was part of the barrel program. If you can keep me posted on that, oh, positively, let me know yeah. how it's going. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, because we're curious to see ourselves yeah, how if this. If you can keep us all posted, yes, mm -hmm. shoot us an email. Thank you. Sure. Councillor Keefe, would you like to say something? Speak now um, or forever hold your peace. Sure, uh, I'll, I'll I'll say what I have to say. I, I should have shown you the the picture uh, of Trash Day on my street, I just happened to go out there and, and I snapped a photo. Uh, the entire street, straight line, all blue barrels, all pulled out, all look perfect. And uh, I mean, I know that there's always room for more communication, but at some point, when does it become us enabling? And um, people will never uh, pull, uh, get off and do it on their own. I think that people that care about their properties and that want to do the right thing will do the right thing. And we put out a lot of communication and it'll just keep getting better. It's going to snowball into, into more good uh, with the use of these barrels. It's not perfect. Nothing is perfect. And if it was easy, then I'm sure everyone would do it. But I've been pretty satisfied. I know my neighborhood looks really nice. I like seeing the, the uniformity of it. And hopefully it will uh, uh, turn out uh, to a better success in uh, trash problems in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Madam Council President, do you have anything to say? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think as a there is with any new program in the city, there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, even though it's something uh, straightforward as trash barrels. But I agree uh, wholeheartedly with Councillor McKenna's motion. I think it's really important to start by educating people. I think the city's done a great job with their series of uh, videos and communications and letters and uh, using multiple media outlets to relay the information because the reality of it is every resident gets their information differently. Some may watch a video on YouTube, some may see it in the newspaper, some may see it on TV, some prefer a letter, some a robocall, but at least if we're giving them as many different outlets as possible, we're doing everything that we can. 
I think it's important for people to know that we're also um, a resource for them as well too. So if they have questions, they can reach out to the city councilors, their ward councilors at large, or, or anyone in the mayor's office. We're happy to answer any questions. Uh, 311 is another great resource. Uh, oftentimes when things come to counselors, that's what we use as a resource. So um, I think it's a great program. And I think that again, it's a learning curve and we'll get there, but I think in the long run, it'll be a, a good improvement. And, Councilor Keefe, I'd like to see that picture because I'm sure your ward looked nice. I know mine did as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilors. Councilor Patch is passing. No, yes. I, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, I think it's uh, working uh, very well. Um, unfortunately, it got it, it was got off to a rough start a little bit with the uh, with the. Um, the communication of uh, it, it kept on changing with the but it's not as steady they're down to what uh, they are actually uh, uh, is, is, are going to do I think uh, it's going to work uh, much better uh, unfortunately uh, in my ward it's the, the people that uh, that took care of their property bought the expensive barrels and uh, uh, did the right thing. They don't, they're the ones that are kind of complaining because uh, they got nice barrels they got to throw away. But other than that, uh, hopefully the the neighbors that don't uh, that that didn't do that. Uh, and, uh, I think Paul knows. You know he sees it himself. Uh, uh, some people that uh, just uh, throw their trash bags out there and. Uh, that this will definitely stop that, and uh, and that's uh, that will improve the uh, rodent problem, and uh, and uh, it'll improve the trash. So I I think it's going very well, and I hope it continues. Thank you. Thank you, uh, councilors. I think um, I I kind of broke this apart, and um, some some things make good sense. I think other things don't. Um, my feeling is having a captain for every street. I don't think that's our chore. I think the mayor's already reached out to people. I think it's going above and beyond. If each council wants to do it within his ward, fine and dandy, go for it. You know, I don't think it's really a thing that we, we have to do, get captains for each street. Um, as far as the mayor going on local cable, he's been there. He had a 15-20 minute piece on cable, and uh, it's on the internet. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't think we should have to include that in this. Uh, the one month for inspectional services, that's already scheduled. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's something we should have to include in something that we may want to send forward. Um, the student issue, I think, is an excellent idea. Uh, but I think four and five send home flyers and outreach projects, I think that's something that we should reach out to the school department and ask them to work with the mayor's office and right. you know, work, you know, use the students. Um, Kickoff event, I think that's been done already. You know, so I really don't think we have to, should we have to pursue that. The journal, TV, uh, going to the Globe, that's up to the mayor if he wants to mm -hmm. pursue that. Uh, knowing that we've been on TV about the rat problem with different uh, different stations, um, the banner. What's what's your thoughts on putting the banner on Broadway? Well, we could certainly do that. Yeah. You know, and we could util utilize some of these electronic billboards that are appeared around the city. Okay. I, I've noticed other cities and towns do that. Uh, we're looking into to doing that. Okay. And as far as the you know, active involvement of Beachmont Improvement Committee and Revere Beach Partnership and Revere Beautification, Council, you know what they always say when you come up with the idea, you become the chairperson? Well, we, we, should, we should make that your duty to reach out to those three organizations to see if they can help us do that. I think it's a, it's a perfect, perfect thing, you know, so. But, you know, I, I would, I'd like to pursue some of these things, but some of them I, I don't think we should include in the request to the mayor. I'll be the trash. Uh, the trash lady? The trash lady. <laughs> we're gonna give you, we're gonna give you a, uh, a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs>
So, you know, I would hope that we could uh, eliminate number one, number two, and number three anyway. Um, if, uh, and hang in for pursue number four, five, uh, seven, and eight, you know, to the mayor, and uh, we'll make a note that uh, item eight, Council McKenna will pursue herself. Mr. Chairman, can I just uh, say that when this was written, a lot of uh, this stuff was just being done. So now it's now it is being done. So it is repeating. But when when we wrote this, it wasn't being done. So um, it was just starting to be done. Mm -hmm. so. so we can eliminate those items that have already been done. We're talking about one, two, three, and. Six. One, two, three. Keeping four, five, seven, eight. Four, five, seven, and eight, yes. Okay. So then we can put that to bed tonight. So it's four, five, seven, and eight? Yes. Yes. Okay, and we'll uh, put it in a bullet point form to the mayor if we could. Okay, and copy okay. to the superintendent, of Perfect. course. If I so, could addre just address one thing that Councilor sure. Patch uh, brought up. It seemed like the biggest bone of contention, the people that went out and bought these new barrels themselves, and then now they feel like they have to throw them away. We have six trash, we're going to call them holidays, uh, that you can have overflow trash. You can use those barrels still on those holidays, so you don't have to discard them. They're, they're going to be useful to you on those weeks that we deem that... Uh, you know, extra trash would be generated at people's households. So you don't have to throw away your, your new barrels that you put you, they will be useful to you. Right, and, that, and that's not just one barrel, that's one barrel for every blue barrel. Yes, that, exactly. So if you as have long three as it's barrels, done correctly and the cup If you have closed, three barrels in your house and it's a long weekend, yep. you know, now you can put six barrels out, right. basically. Three right. of the new ones and three of the old ones. Exactly, so and you don't have to discard them. And while I have you here, Mr. Superintendent, um, you just clarified the old barrels, so that's good. Um, what do we do about private housing projects that have their own barrels that are violating the bags and leaving the bed? Well, well unfortunately, well, the housing authority, I guess, it, it's tough. I don't think the city is even allowed to find them. Um, there's something that prevents that. I think they have come a long way. They have purchased new barrels right. themselves, almost the identical to the ones we have. So I think they're trying to clean up their own act over there. And in some cases, they put in their own dumpsters yes. in some projects. Right. So I think they've come a long way in the last Absolutely. few months. So I, but I happened to get a uh, photograph this morning of 525 Beach. Okay. You know, where they had, you know, five barrels out, and every single one of them was overflowing. Right. I mean, if it's a federal housing authority, I think I would yeah. be a little bit limited there. I'm not sure. Well, I'm sure we can send them letters. But oh, I, yes, I, we can I, put it, I put it on 311 myself right. to I'm, let I'm them sure know. they'll work with yeah. us, I mean, if we bring it to you know, the They should attention. be putting out more barrels for 30 right. units, exactly. more than five, five barrels. Right. So uh, we can work on that, I'm okay. sure. Any other uh, barrel issues? Councilor Patch. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just thought of one other uh, complaint that I got, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as uh, grass and leave, mm -hmm. uh, leaves, uh, yeah, yeah, waste, waste. Mm -hmm. they can put that in a barrel, their old barrel? Yeah, yeah, there's no change to that program. They can put it in the paper bag. They can put it in their barrel open so they can see what it is. Yes, there's, there's no change to that program. Okay, it's, but it's still, it'll still be the same schedule every still year. The, still the same schedule, yep. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up, uh, Councilor Patch, because that's another reason to keep your old barrels. Yes. You can use right. that for your you yard waste positively. on the off weeks. That's right. So, but uh, other than that, any, any other uh, comments on uh, the barrel program? Thank you, Paul. Okay, so, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. And uh, that's the last item on the uh, Public Works Subcommittee. Thank everybody for your attendance, and uh, we'll look forward to the... Uh, Bring this up at the council meeting for uh, uh, recommendations. Thank you.